like Lori said, you've got to make it known. Now, certainly don't just bust up in there and be like, I want to see this grandkid more, and you're going to bring them over here. <laughs> yeah, and don't don't bust up in on your partner and go, your kids are pieces of crap because they don't bring that kid over. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related. Real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. Welcome to episode 266 of the Nacho Kids Podcast. And it is a bright, sunny day. Yep. And we have completed the Guided Boot Camp Challenge. I know. Yep. It was awesome. I can't wait to do it again. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Did you have any... Special takeaways, like some aha moments from others and things like that. Oh, yeah. We'll share them later. Okay. <laughs> if I have to get their permission. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, I'm not going to say their name or anything, but still. But, yeah, I've had some really, really good feedback, and which I really appreciate because it helps us to make the program better. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we're not here changing lives, what are we doing? That's right. <laughs> All right. So today, I figured we would take a few questions and answer those, David. All right, cool. All right. The first one is, how do you get a Disneyland parent to stop guilt parenting? You Hmm. don't. (laughs) Yeah, that's a tough one. And there's a lot of nuances around this. So if, if you have somebody, for example, they get their kid every other weekend. My opinion on that is that you not only should you not expect that to go away, but you you almost expect the opposite. Like if you're only getting your kid from Friday night to Sunday night, the 48 hours every two weeks, why would you not want to spend all your time with them trying to do things that are fun? Right. I mean, they're, they're there. They're not going to be there doing a bunch of chores and cleaning up. And now it's like, look I, look, I got them for two days. Let's go have fun. Let's do all this other stuff. If you want to call it Disneyland or Disney World or Disney whatever, poor Disney. <laughs> but if you want to call it that, that's fine. But, you know, there's certainly a scale, a gradient, if you will, to that. Like it can't, it also can't be unhealthy that they're doing it so much, but are you know you're not going to stop it if it's if but if it's problematic, I, you know you need to have a, a conversation about it. But to mm-hmm. say I want to stop it, and that every other weekend when this kid comes over, I won't, I don't want this behavior of my significant other spending all this time with their kid. I think you're going to be better off changing your focus. And mm-hmm. how you look at it, then you are changing that that significant other and how they deal with their kid. Uh, and if you were able to change your significant other, my fear is that there would be a cost to that down the road for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, because then they would, quote, quote, change because you're pressuring them to. Mm-hmm. And then they would resent you for the outcome of that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because we know many step parents that even push for their partner to get more time with their kid or to get full custody, and they regret that greatly. Yeah. But on the flip side, and this is why these questions are are hard to answer with little snippets. On the flip side of that, let's say that the custody schedule is every other week, for example. Um, mm-hmm. If it's every other week and you have this Disneyland parent happening, you know, seven days on, seven days off, then, yeah, that can be that can be a little more problematic. Well, and two, it can be the bio parent doesn't pay attention to the hours kid mm-hmm. when they have their first bio kid. Mm-hmm. That gets so convoluted when you start talking about it. <laughs> so, for instance, say you and I had a kid. You got your kid every other week. Every other week, you want to focus more on your first kid, Mm -hmm. the kid that's not with you all the time. Right. And as your partner, I could look at that as 
you don't care as much about our kid or you're not helping with our kid or you're ignoring our kid. When the reality of it is you're not doing any of those things. You're just trying to make the best out of the time you have with the child that you only have 50% of the time. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you don't have the guilty parent syndrome with an hours kid. Right. Yep. Which is exactly why these questions are very difficult to just give a, a easy answer to. And oftentimes right. we've found too that when we say, okay, you're you're saying that there's this Disneyland parent thing, often dad, right? Disneyland dad. We've seen it happen on both sides, but let's just say Disneyland dad. And yeah, that's why they said Disneyland parent, because they've seen it on both too. Yeah. But when we but usually a lot of times anyway, I won't I won't even, it won't it's not all the time, obviously. But when we say Explain to me the behavior that you're seeing that makes you call it a Disneyland dad. More often than not, it's not behavior that's that's unreasonable or inappropriate. It's when you start looking at it from the perspective of the other parent and you take the totality of circumstances, you're like, okay, I can see exactly why. This behavior is what it is. And it's not destructive behavior or inappropriate behavior or anything like that. It's just normal. Mm -hmm. So that's when you just have to back up and really look at it and, and ask those types of questions. Oftentimes, it's just because somebody's got their feelings hurt or they don't understand why things are happening the way they are and they just want them to stop. And they just label it. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Not an easy question. The, 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 if you want a short answer, the short answer is it all depends <laughs> on mm -hmm. everything else. Well, but, the short answer is you don't. <laughs> right. You don't stop it. But if it's mm -hmm. a problem, that's where, honestly, you just have to, there has to be a deeper conversation around it individually to figure out, is it really problematic or is it just the way you're looking at it? Mm -hmm. So anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for taking that down the rabbit hole. No, you're fine. That's that's what happens because it's not always a simple yes or no or do this, do that answer. No, it's not. And and I know that there were times when you could certainly have called me a Disneyland dad. And it's times when uh, I was not that. And mm -hmm. for me, I'm like, I didn't I didn't really change the way I parented. It was just depending on the circumstances of everything else that was going on. It could certainly appear that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, ready for the next question? Yeah. <laughs> How do you nacho stuff that directly affects you? Example, if his kids don't brush their teeth and have 10 cavities and we have to pay for half, it's frustrating. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. David? Yeah, I mean, we had this same struggle. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we had this exact same struggle. Mm -hmm. I do have to say, if the kid is going 50-50, back and forth. Dad can make them brush their teeth every night, flaws, all that stuff. The next week, mom don't make them do anything. Yeah. Which you can't control. And you're in the same boat. And you're in the same boat. This does affect you, and we get that. But you can't control the other home to make them brush their teeth. Right? Mm-hmm. And honestly, some people are prone to cavities more than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to do with hygiene. Hygiene, of course, is a part of it, but some people are just more prone to cavities. They can brush every day, floss every day, and they're just more apt to get cavities. Yep. Regarding the money part of it, I'm assuming that they share finances mm -hmm. because it affects them. What we did was I realized what was within my control and what was not. Mm -hmm. And David could tell his kids to go brush their teeth, but he didn't go in there with them. So are they brushing them properly? Are they flossing? Are they doing all this stuff? You're not going to go into the bathroom with a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old and make sure they're brushing their teeth properly. Most people won't. will say that. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, you figure they're old enough to brush their teeth without guidance. As far as the finances go, the option is you can have split finances. You share the household expenses 
anything outside of that related to the stepkids comes out of the bio parents' pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I have to say, even in our situation with David having four kids and me having one, split finances was not really something that I guess we're a fan of because we know at different times throughout the relationship, one person seems to carry the other. Mm-hmm. And that's a team. Right. So that's how we look at it. But I will say, if David was playing Disney Dad, like we talked about a minute ago, and every other week when his kids came, he would have to go buy them new shoes because he just wanted to get them new shoes. Or he had to go buy them something or take them to laser tag. And, you know, with four kids, that's expensive. So if he decided to do that, then we would have to have a talk about it. Mm -hmm. And say, look, this is impacting our finances greatly. There's nothing wrong with you taking them maybe once a month to do something or once every two months. Mm -hmm. But financially, this is not a good decision for us as a team. Right. Because if not, you're going to grow up, you're going to try to retire, and you ain't going to have no money. (laughs) Yeah. And those kids that you bought those shoes for ain't going to (laughs) care. Right. Yeah, it, it becomes a conversation about how how is it affecting you? Is it you know because sometimes it's okay. I, we can afford to do it, but I just don't want to do it. We shouldn't mm-hmm. have to do it, right? And, you know, and for me, taking the kids to the dentist was just as stressful for me as it was you because I didn't want mm-hmm. them to have cavities either, and I was frustrated because they weren't brushing their teeth at the other house either. Right. But you know. And I, I hated when they had cavities. I hated even more so when you <laughs> would call me and be like, how did the dentist thing go? I'm like, oh, God. You know? Yeah. I didn't want to didn't want to give you the news if they had a cavity or something like that. But, you know, we had to put the proper emotional weight on it, realize that we were a team. And, you know, it's not like I was trying to sabotage our finances. <laughs> yeah. Here, eat Snickers before you go to bed. Yeah. So like I, I'm trying to to contribute to the problem, you know, and and then just understand what's important and go from there. Even biological parents in nuclear families deal with some of these same issues. Mm-hmm. It's just different when it's a step family. Right. It's just different. That's a good way to put it. All right. Let's find another one. Hmm. How do you get your step grown up? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, your adult step grown kid. up stepkid. Well, right. I didn't want to say adult because I'm not sure the age. Okay. To allow you to see the grandchildren more. Uh. <laughs> okay. So here's my thoughts on that. And again, we can't ask this person questions. So well, this is hope, based off the information we're given. Okay. So based on the rest of the question, I would say it most likely is an adult stepkid. Go. Yeah. Why would they have grandkids if they're not? It could be an adult stepkid, but when I say it says step grown up. Right. But they the, Okay, adult step kid. Whatever, go. But the okay, but the step grown up has kids, right? Right. Okay. I mean, I guess they could be sixteen and have a kid. Yes, they could. <laughs> but I wouldn't call them grown up. All right, anyway. Okay. okay. So go ahead. If I wanted to see my step grandkids more. And I didn't have a good relationship with the stepkid or their partner. Mm -hmm. Then I would ask David, hey, why don't you see if your kid can bring grandkid little Susie over to play for a little while? You can go that route. If you don't have a good relationship with them and you want to see the grandkids, then you may want to consider building on that relationship. Yeah. If it's a horrible relationship, I wouldn't ask them if you can see the kid more because they're thinking, no, you're not going to see the kid. I hate you. Mm -hmm. But you can always try to rebuild that relationship or even just a text message that says, hey, I was wondering if y'all wanted me to watch the baby this weekend while y'all went and did something. Offer. This may be as simple as they don't know you want to see the grandchildren more because you're not communicating that or you're not offering that. Mm -hmm. And it may be that this person wants everybody to come over and not just the grandchild, but they want to see the grandchild. Yep. So my suggestion would be 
have your partner contact their child about seeing the grandkid more if you have a bad relationship with the stepkid. Yeah. And this, or you just don't feel comfortable asking that. Yeah. And th- this plays so much into why we push for people to have good relationships. Uh, you could say all day long, I don't, I don't want to have a relationship with my stepkid because fill in the blank. And you may not. However, down the road, like in this case, down the road, there's, there's grandkids involved. And now all of a sudden you're like, dude, I want to spend time with this grandkid. Well, you've already damaged the relationship or just let it go for so long that, you know, it's just going to be hard for that to happen. Mm -hmm. But typically if a child sees that you have a great relationship with their parent, they're going to be more apt to give you some grace if they see that you have great interactions with their kid, whenever you are around them, they're going to be more apt to give you some grace. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's difficult. You're de- you're definitely dealing with the fact that you have to, at that point, now you're looking at, well, now I got to fix this relationship with this step kid. I probably should have done it years ago, but I wasn't really concerned about it at that time. And mm-hmm. now you got to try to do it. And it's, you've waited so long, it's going to be harder to do. Right. I agree. So if you want to see the stepkid or the step grandkid more, let it be known. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Yeah. I mean, it, you could sit down to significant other and say, look, I want to see the step, the, the grandkid more. What, what, how can we do that? Mm-hmm. What are some options? You know, just ask and maybe, maybe they have an idea. Maybe they've had a conversation with the daughter And maybe she said, oh, I don't really have a problem with her being around her, but, you know, she didn't treat me good. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you've you've got to, like Lori said, you've got to make it known. Now, certainly don't just bust up in there and like, I want to see this grandkid more and you're going to bring them over here. (laughs) Yeah, and don't don't bust up in on your partner and go, your kids are pieces of crap because they don't bring that kid over. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, It's, it's the same. It's the same advice that we give with everything else, which is. You have to let that relationship grow at whatever pace and rate the kid allows it to grow. Mm-hmm. But you, but it, you've got to have one. Like you can't expect anybody to bring a kid over and let you see it if they don't have a good relationship with you. Like I'm not right. going. I'm not going to do that with anybody, whether they're family or not. Right. Yeah. All right. Next question. Is blending always this hard? (laughs) Yes. Next. (laughs) No, it's, I mean, we have seen times where people have had just, I mean, I hate to say a fairy tale blends, but they have, we've had people that have come into the Academy and they said, you know, they're, they're in their second blend because maybe the, the first one, the, the person they were married to passed away. And they're like, dude, the first one was just amazing. It was easy and everybody got along. And it, all these things that that everybody s- says that step families can't be, we were that. Like, it was great. Everybody got along, even with the exes. It was just great. And then my second one, it was like complete 180. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. is it always hard? No, it's not always hard. But the chances that it's going to be hard and crazy and messed up is very, very high. Right. So you and I are now dealing with your adult kids mm-hmm. and their partners and their babies. Mm-hmm. It's a different kind of hard. Yeah. It's, it's different challenges. Unless they move back in. <laughs> <laughs> so, for instance, if... You know, the stepkids are younger and they're leaving crap all over your house and or crap all over the house and it stresses you out. Well, of course, when they're older and not living there, you don't have that challenge. Mm -hmm. But the challenge you may have is when they bring over their baby and their baby's got a wet diaper and you don't see them changing that diaper. Mm -hmm. So as a step parent, do you say you need to change little Johnny's diaper Or where are little Johnny's diapers so I can change him? Or do you let them parent? Yeah. And and this is, go ahead. That 
completely depends on the relationship you have with that stepchild. Yeah. And, and this is where overstepping, even as a parent, yes, this is where that can happen. And we, you know, obviously a lot of us experience that. I've certainly experienced my parents overstepping because I think there's a, there's a time, a tr- there's a transition period, right? Where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm still your parent, but I'm not parenting you. Mm-hmm. And in that, in those early days, when they're in their early twenties, it's like there's a transition period there that is kind of weird for it. At least for me, it's like weird for me. It's weird for the kid. Like, <laughs> and uh, so you see stuff, and it's like, oh, I don't know if I should say anything or not? Because you know, there's some things you should say things about, and there's others just like I don't know, man. It might be overstepping because now I'm trying to tell them how they should parent. Or I'm mm-hmm. trying to tell them how they should handle situations. And they're not asking for my advice. So, Right. Yeah. And sometimes it can be, again, so much is how you communicate. Mm-hmm. If I saw little Susie walking around with a diaper that's dragging to her feet and she's soaking wet, and I say, are you just going to let your kid run around like that? That's going to be taken completely different than if I said, Hey, looks like little Susie needs her diaper changed. Where's the diapers? Or offering to help. Right. Because too often how we say things come across as criticism. Oh, yeah. I would say most of the time it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you just slow down and think about the delivery, (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I, I like to think about it in food terms. Like you, if you brought me a nice cake and you just, Set it in front of me and like, I made you a cake. That's very different than you walking up and smashing it in my face and say, here, I got it. I made you a cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all in the presentation. And a lot of letting the bio parent parent mm-hmm. carries over into letting the stepkid parent their own kid, how they seem fit. Right. So if they know little Susie has a wet diaper, somebody has said something they know. It's obvious. Mm-hmm. And they choose not to change it at that time. That's their choice as a parent. Yes, it can cause diaper rash. Yes, it can cause this. Yes, it can cause that. We understand all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But But, go ahead. But the you can take the same advice that we give about about deferring to the bio parent. Mm -hmm. You would still do the same thing. Like for example, let's say it's my kid, and and their kid has a diaper. So my grandkid has a diaper needs to be changed. You would still come to me and say, you know, little Susie's diaper needs to be changed. You know, can you say something to your son about that in that way? You know, if you don't have that relationship. Right. Or uh, again, that can be phrased differently. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying say exactly like that. I'm just saying go, go to the person who has the relationship. Right. Exactly. All right, one more, and then we are wrapping up for today. Let's wrap it. <laughs> all right. Does it get better after they all turn 18? <laughs> um, define okay. better. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's different. There is no magic wand that makes these stepkids disappear when they turn 18. No. Yeah, child support might be over. Yeah, going back and forth might be over. But that doesn't mean that they're going to up and leave. And I know back in the day when I grew up, you know, with dinosaurs and all, (laughs) that most of the time when you reached 18, you did move out. But the difference was you could move out by having a minimum wage job. Yeah. You can't do that now. No. So unfortunately, I feel like our kids are not in as good of a place as we were when we grew up and hit 18 Mm -hmm. as far as the moving out thing. Yeah. And just because they turn 18 doesn't mean that dad or mom doesn't mean that the bio parent is going to make their child have more responsibility. No. We know many people that we work with that their stepkids are older. They have a job. Sometimes they don't contribute Cleaning up, they don't contribute financially. There's no contribution. Mm-hmm. And so there's still those same issues. So turning 18 doesn't really change anything. Nope. 
if anything, it gives you less ability and less opportunity to work on the relationship. Yeah, because they're probably not as physically there yeah. as now, they would normally be. Now, they, they can go out and they can have kids, and sometimes that changes their perspective on life. They can even end up in their own blended family situation. I mean, it, which is uh, there's a high likelihood that didn't even happen. You're like, because <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're seeing it. You know, we're living, we're experiencing it. it. Yeah, we're living that as well. And so now they look at you as a step parent and say, "Oh wow, now I'm a step parent." Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. I, or I'm going to be in the situation where I'm in that, or a blended family, or whatever the case might be. So. Then that now all of a sudden there are they are looking at you through a different lens. So right. but again, back to the stepkid and everything else, there's always going to be certain blended family challenges, just like there's always going to be family challenges. Right. It's not going away. Whether they move out, whether you move to another country, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. Mm-hmm. It's about looking at what challenges are you facing right now? Mm-hmm. How can you get through them as a team? And then be ready for the next challenges because there will be something else. Right. And it may be something simple. Mm -hmm. We always talk about how the nacho parenting method is not there to enable you to avoid problems from ever happening. It's there to give you the tools to be able to handle the challenges and problems when they occur. Well, I will say, David... A lot of the method or some of the method is teaching you how to avoid these problems because of your actions. Yeah. So that's why I'm, well, maybe I didn't make it clear. It's you, you're not avoiding all problems and challenges, but yes, you are definitely avoiding some problems and challenges because again, like you said, you're, you're nipping those things in the bud. So they're never, they're never either never becoming a problem or they don't grow to be a problem. Right. But it's not problem free. Is That's my only point. It's well, that's not, life. It is life. But there's so many people who look at it like, when, when am I not going to have any more issues in my blended family? And it's like, dude, never, never. Mm-hmm. Because you're dealing with people. And yeah. It's just, you know, you're never going to avoid problems at, you know, when am I going to never have problems at work? When am I never going to have health issues? Or when am I never going to fill in the blank? Mm hmm. There's not, it doesn't happen. Right. So. But nachoing allows you to have less problems, allows you to look at those problems differently, Mm -hmm. and allows you the tools to better deal with those problems. Yeah. let's, Let's compare it. We do this sometimes. Let's compare it to your health. Will you, do you have, or will you have health problems? Yes. If you live long enough, you will have health problems. Uh, but the extent to which you have health problems greatly depends on how well you're taking care of yourself. What kind of preventative measures are you taking? This is the same thing. Nacho parenting is preventative measures that you're taking so that you have a better blended life. Mm-hmm. Or to repair your mess. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, um, you know, there you go. There's a lot of analogies we can use. But, you know, it's not... We're not saying that you're always going to have problems and therefore, you know, give up on everything. It's more like you're always going to have problems. So you might as well (laughs) learn how to adjust to them and deal with them, face the challenges head on, understand where you can avoid even having these challenges and problems in the first place. Yep. So you can either figure it out (laughs) or you can deal with it in a bad way. You have the option. The choice is yours. Yeah. It's like, what is it? Choose your hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard having a good blended family life. It's hard having a bad blended family life. But choose one because you're going to have either and they're both hard. What? <laughs> look, because, look, not not doing the work means you've got to deal with all the problems. That's hard. Right. Do, doing the work is hard, too, right. to have a good blended family. So it's hard either way. Okay, I got you. I got so you. So choose choose your hard. Yep. Yep. It's just that one now. it's just that one way's lazy. And you, one way prepares you for future issues. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the, the outcomes are different, but they're both hard to do. Right. Good point. All right. All right. That's all the questions I'm asking David today. <laughs> I mean, like all day. I'm not going to talk to him anymore because he's obviously in a uh, mood. Um, <laughs> not in a mood. <laughs> so the next guided boot camp challenge is going to be August 1st. And we will be providing a link to our email list for applications for that. Again, we're going to keep it small, so maximum of 20 people. And the deadline will be July 25th. All right, so be on the lookout for that. And for our listeners, if you are not on our email list, get on our email list so you don't miss these things. Go to nachokids.com, scroll to the bottom, and join our mailing list. Yep. And in September, we will be releasing... The guided change your stinking thinking challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think everybody should go through that. I do too. Even I think if you're not in a blended family, you should go through I it. I agree. <laughs> I think a lot of people might think, I don't have stinking thinking. Yeah. Mm, you do. You do. Yeah. And it I, will help you tremendously. Mm-hmm. By default, you do. Yeah. The fact that you think you don't means you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Quit being in denial. <laughs> That's right. You have stinking thinking, people. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Other than that, I'm still plugging away at the book. Go, Lori, with your bad self. Go, Lori, with your bad self. Proud of you. (sighs) Yeah. Last night I was working on it, and I got kind of discombobulated. I'm like, but what if this doesn't follow that line? I'm like, calm down. Calm down. Because that was stinking thinking. (laughs) Yeah, it is. So I took a break and came back. So. Hopefully, soon, we will be telling you more about the book. Now, it's not going to be a fast process. That's okay. I chose to do it that way because I chose to lower my stress. <laughs> well, I don't know how many people out there have written a book, but, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot. It's not as easy as I thought it would be. Yeah, I, I, I don't even think it would be easy. So. No. Well, I thought it would be because I know... I know this method inside and out and backwards and forwards and yeah. But anyway. I yeah. I think I've written a, so I've written a chapter of a book before and it had to do with it and stuff like that. And this has been years ago and it, that was hard enough just doing that. Mm-hmm. But well, yeah. Part of my hard with that is it's like when we, <laughs> when we talk to somebody, I want to make sure we include everything. And it's so hard to include every scenario. It's impossible to include every scenario. But it's like, oh, well, did I say this? Did I say that? And then I make notes everywhere. Yeah. Well, it would be be like if you took a a roadmap. And for those of you who don't know, you're too young to remember. They used to be made out of paper. Mm -hmm. But but let's say you took a roadmap and you're like, we're going to go from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to Los Angeles, California. How many different ways can you get there? And I need you to write me a book that, t- that tells you how to take every single route mm-hmm. to get there. That's, and what's on that route, what to yeah. expect. Yeah. Yep. The Everything. pros and the cons of each route. Right. The price yeah. of each route. <laughs> exactly. Where to stop and eat, where to get gas, yep. where the bumps in the road are, mm-hmm. where the detours, detours are, all the that. <laughs> the detours. That's, that's what it feels like writing a book about not your parenting. Yeah. It's like there's so many different ways yep. that, that you have to deal with things. But anyway. But it's in process, in yeah. progress. And like when I say in progress, I don't mean the same progress I said six months ago. <laughs> because like I'm really working on it this time. <laughs> I was working on it last time, but now I have guidance. And I'm so happy. Yes, I am too. All right, folks. That is our show for today. Thanks for listening. Be sure to join us again next week. And remember, life is good. When you nacho. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.